Well, hi, friends. Good morning. Six o'clock here on your Friday. We made it to the weekend. I'm Tim Pham. This morning, we are tracking severe weather. It is going to be bitterly cold, so we want to alert you and prepare you for the days ahead. And meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining us now with the very latest. Thomas, you've been working hard in the weather center tracking this drop in temperature, and we've noticed it's dropped quite a bit in the last couple of hours even. Yeah, even this last hour, another three degrees lower heading into 6 a.m. We are now down to just two degrees in Spokane, and we're seeing sub-zero temperatures temperatures for most of North Idaho as well. Minus four in Coeur d'Alene, minus six currently in Sandpoint. So these are the temperatures that we've been anticipating for a week, and it is by far the coldest we've experienced so far this winter. But you factor in even just the slightest wind, a 10 mile per hour wind puts the wind chill at about minus 14 in Spokane, minus 29 in Coeur d'Alene, and the coldest spots are Sandpoint and OMAC, their current wind chills at minus 31. And this is just the beginning of what is likely going to be a three day event for the inland northwest with extremely cold weather. All right, and because of the severe weather, we do have some school closings and delays to tell you about this morning. They're also scrolling there at the bottom of your screen. These are the schools closed today. Here's some of the big ones. This one just got added here. Moscow School District closed today, include also Warden School District, Quincy School District, Ephrata School District, and Genesee Schools. There's also a number of delays. Those are scrolling there at the bottom of your screen. We will continue to keep you updated on school closings and delays all morning long here on Up With Creme and on our website, creme.com slash closings. And a traffic alert for you here at 602 this morning. I 90 eastbound is closed at the Vantage Bridge because of blizzard conditions. This is just past Ellensburg. WSP says those lanes are shut down because of whiteout conditions on the bridge. Washdot says crews are working to help any drivers who are stuck right now, and this is going to be a big problem for drivers on the holiday weekend. Of course, right now they are not saying when that side of the interstate will reopen, but we will let you know as soon as we find out. We want to get to breaking news now. In just a few hours, the Shoshone County Sheriff's Office will be launching a retrieval mission to recover the body of a man presumed killed in an avalanche. This happened on Stevens Peak near Mullen. Late last night, two other men caught in the avalanche were successfully rescued. The area has been under avalanche warnings for the past few days. The Sheriff's Office says rescue crews were able to find the two rescued men thanks to a GPS transmitting device. Right now, we don't know the names of any of the three men caught in that avalanche, but of course, this is a developing story. We do have a crew headed towards Wallace right now to bring you a live report. We'll let you know when that happens. Rescuers are also warning people to be careful if they hit the backcountry this weekend. Experts say be prepared if you head to the mountains because in single digit temps, just waiting to be rescued can lead to death. If you're going out in those t in, in the colder temperatures, be prepared to rescue yourself. The early signs are shivering. Uh, the late signs are you stop shivering. Right now, the avalanche danger is high in the St. Joe and Selkirk Mountains. And for the Cascades, it's being called, quote, considerably dangerous. Well, as temperatures drop, it is so important to look out for the symptoms of frostbite. This includes red pale skin, feeling numb, muscle stiffness and blistering. Depending on the severity, you may need to head to an emergency room. These sub-zero temps can also pose a danger to your home. To make sure your pipes don't freeze, the Red Cross says to know where the main shutoff valve is, seal air leaks, insulate pipes near outer walls, in crawl spaces and in attics, and disconnect garden hoses. Here's a few more tips for you. Turn on your faucet to a constant slow drip. Open cabinet doors to let the warmer air reach your pipes. Keep the heat no lower than 55 degrees and close the vents in your foundation. With the sub-zero temperatures comes an emergency situation for Spokane's unhoused population. The city is immediately opening up more beds for people needing a safe place to spend the days and nights. Creme 2 Shannon Mowdy explains the changes. Well, the Trent shelter behind me is just one of Spokane's overnight centers that is now at surge capacity under that emergency declaration. Breaks of blue sky paint a deceptive picture of the troubles that lie ahead for Spokane. With frigid cold coming, the city's adding 183 shelter beds 
under surge capacity. This includes existing providers, but also new facilities. And this includes members of faith-based communities, churches that are stepping forward. Mayor Lisa Brown's emergency declaration also allowed the city to plan beyond the next seven days to reopen and winterize the Cannon Street shelter. That'll provide more beds once a deal with Compassionate Addiction Services is finalized. We are going to be building this out over time, and some of that is related to just getting the contracts in place, uh, and some of it's related to staffing. Which is why we're relying on existing providers who can do surge capacity during this first seven-day cold blast. This seven-day response will cost $29,000, Brown told City Council Thursday. Council had set aside $250,000 for emergency sheltering during extreme weather. So I can tell you right now that that um, pot of funds is not going to be enough. We will do our best to make it uh, stretch. Brown says with the loss of federal dollars, the city's homeless services are facing a funding gap for the rest of but the I year. That conversation, really plus addressing how to fund and operate sheltering for the remainder of winter, still lie ahead. Now during the daytime when the overnight shelters aren't open, people can go to warming centers. That includes every city of Spokane library and for transportation from those warming centers to overnight shelters. There's also that you can get a free ride through Spokane Transit if you are headed to a warming center. Shannon Mowdy. So let's talk a little bit more about what Shannon was just talking about. For anyone looking to get warm during the day, city libraries will be open during business hours for anyone looking to stay warm. Libraries are open from 9 to 7 Monday through Thursday, 10 to 5 on Friday and Saturday, and noon to 4 on Sundays. If you can't get to a shelter for any reason, the Salvation Army has vans that will pick you up to bring you to a shelter. These vans do operate 24 hours a day. If you do need a ride, just call this number here on your screen. Spokane Transit Authority buses will also offer free rides to anyone headed to a warming center or shelter as long as it stays below freezing. We are not just below freezing, we are below zero temperature wise in many locations and our wind chills even worse than that. And it's the wind chill warnings that are in effect all the way through noon on Sunday. So it is the next three mornings is when we experience the worst of this cold snap for the inland northwest wind chills dropping to as low as 40 degrees below zero. There's also been a bit of snow for the inland northwest. A brief snow shower before 4 a.m. in Spokane gave us a new dusting of snowfall. Doppler radar still picking up on some activity, especially between Pomeroy and Walla Walla, and a little bit of action out towards Vantage, where we know that some near blizzard like conditions have been reported. Not a whole lot of snowfall, but it's the winds and the blowing snow that can still reduce the visibilities in some locations. As we look at the 12 hour forecast. Yes, we get those blue skies and sunshine, but it doesn't help the temperatures whatsoever as we'll just hover between about zero and three degrees all afternoon. And with the extreme cold blowing in, you might be hearing weather terms like wind chill advisory and wind chill warning. At Creme 2, we bring you more to every story, so we want to break down what these terms actually mean. First is wind chill advisory. When a wind chill advisory is issued, parts of the area could be seeing very cold air and strong winds, bringing wind chill temps as low as negative 24. Frostbite can begin in just 15 minutes when exposed to these temps. The second is wind chill warning. This is the more severe of the two, which much of the region is actually under right now. When you hear this, it means very cold wind chills. More than 20 to 40 degrees below zero could be expected, and this could cause frostbite on exposed skin in as little as five minutes. So always use caution when traveling. Remember to have appropriate clothing and keep pets indoors as much as possible.